Hi everybody and welcome back to the Mathematics of Vice, the channel where I tell you everything your teacher didn't about the mathematics behind your favorite guilty pleasures. Today we're going to be talking about one of mankind's favorite vices, gambling. Gambling! It's like gaming except with real consequences. I'm going to start by sharing five of my sort of rules of thumb when it comes to gambling in general. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of probability using what is in this deck of cards right here as an example. In my next episode, I'm going to cover the rules of the game Blackjack, why I like Blackjack as my game of choice when I go to a casino, and how to develop a probability-based strategy that will maximize your chances of success in the short term. So gambling is one of those things that can be a lot of fun, but it can also be very dangerous. Like many of the other vices we're going to be talking about on this very show, gambling does have an addictive quality. And so when I go to gamble myself or when I am advising others on their gambling, I have five rules of thumb that I always follow. And here they are. The first rule is the house always wins in the long run. And that, in the long run, is very, very important because it's obviously true that the house doesn't always win every single time, right? If you were sitting down to play blackjack and you lost every single hand that you played at a casino, I very much doubt you'd be going back to that casino anytime soon. But on the other hand, the casino can't be just giving money away. They are a business. And if their games gave away more money than they made, the casino would go out of business very quickly. And that margin is where casinos live. The basic idea of this rule is that although it's possible to increase your odds of success in the short term, gambling is not a career choice. At least not the kind of gambling that I do. Poker, for example, is a game that I don't play, but is much more skill-based than math-based. You can legitimately make a career for yourself out of playing poker. Not so much with blackjack and craps. Rule number two, as you go into the casino, the very first thing you will see are rows and rows of slot machines. My rule, walk right past them, don't even look at them. Rule number three is also extremely important, be careful with alcohol. A lot of the time if you sit at one spot and play blackjack or, or any other sort of game for a long period of time, especially if you start doing well, Waitresses and other folks will come by and start offering you drinks at a discounted rate or perhaps even free because alcohol affects the mind's ability to make good, rational decisions based on probability. We're going to learn more about alcohol on this channel eventually, but even a small amount of alcohol in your system makes it more likely that you are going to gamble from your heart rather than gambling from your head. Oh, I know that this is my moment, but the math doesn't care. So when it comes to alcohol, you should know your limit and you should stay very, very far away from that limit. And if you feel yourself becoming intoxicated, you have to have the strength of will to put the cards down and step back from the table. My fourth rule of common sense gambling, never, ever, ever use the ATM at the casino. They are always available. They should be everywhere in the casino because what the casinos want is for you to run out of cash on hand and then go to one of those very convenient and easy to access ATMs to try to make up for what you lost. Don't do it. It's a fool's game. When I go to a casino, I bring a set amount of cash, usually between $100 and $200, and when that is gone, it is gone. Going to the ATM to try to make up for what you lost is a great way to end up losing really big. So think of the cash that you bring into the casino as the fee to play the game. You're going to assume that you're going to lose that money, and if you don't lose that money, it'll be a bonus. Either way, you're going to have some fun, right? Gambling is a game in the end. It's meant to be fun. It's not meant to be a means of supporting yourself. It is not a financial strategy. My final rule is that it's better to aim for incremental increases than it is to go for the big all-or-nothing jackpot. Incremental increases are almost always more reliable than just hoping that you hit it big at just the right moment. 
So, with all that in mind, and with our eyes open to the potential negative consequences of gambling, let's take a look at what is in this pack of cards and how we can use probability to up our game when we're sitting at the blackjack table. All right, class, welcome to my unboxing. Here we have a standard box of bicycle playing cards. As you can see, it's in this clear plastic um, wrap which I could take off with the tab down here, but since this is already loose, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that right off. I'll dispose of that. Now, inside I've got this box, which as you can see here, is um, actually sealed with a tamper-evident um, sticker here to keep people from messing with the cards before you buy them. So we'll take that. Maybe fold it down, stick it to the box there. Okay, and inside, we have, to start with, this card here that is kind of a, it's just an advertisement, really. But of course, this being 2020, this has social media information on the back and such. Um, we're gonna set this aside for the time being and um, we're not gonna use that. Looks like we've got another advertisement card here. Another couple of cards that we're gonna get rid of are these two Joker cards right here, okay? We don't need these for the game of blackjack, so we are going to set them aside as well. So what we are left with, as you can see, are 52 cards that are split into four different symbols or suits. Okay, these are spades, and these are diamonds, clubs, and hearts. Those are the four suits, and every single card in this deck is one of those four suits. So here we have the spades all spread out. Now, each of these cards has a value, and that value will be the same regardless of what the suit is. All right, so the ace here is the only card that could be worth one of two different values. It's worth either one or 11, depending on the situation, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. These numbered cards, two through 10, are each worth just the number on the face of the card, that is their value. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then you have these three, uh, they're called face cards because of the, uh, well, because of the faces the jack, the queen, and the king, each of which is also worth 10. And here we have all 52 cards, four suits, with 13 cards per suit, all laid out. And again, these values of each of these cards remains the same regardless of which suit it is. There is no suit that is higher or lower value than any other. So now that we've talked a little bit about these cards, let's talk a little bit about probability. We think of probability as the odds something will happen, and that's a good way of thinking about it, but to calculate the probability, it is simply the ratio, and ratio means division, it is the ratio of how many outcomes we're looking for divided by how many total possible outcomes there are. Okay, desired outcomes divided by total possible outcomes. So in this case, if I was to shuffle this deck of cards up and choose one of them at random, then the probability of getting a particular card would be the number of that card in the deck divided by the total number of cards, which right now is 52. So let's say I wanted to find the probability of drawing a six, let's say. All right, I'm going to notate that by saying P and then a six with parentheses. Okay, the P stands for probability, and then what the thing in the parentheses is, is what you're finding the probability for. So the probability of a six, well, let's see. I see how many sixes in this deck. I see one, two, three, four sixes out of a total of 52 cards. That works out to about 0.077 or 7.7%. Now you might notice that there are also, for example, four fives in the deck. And the probability of drawing a five is therefore also 7.7%. Same thing with two and nine. 
But what if I wanted to find the probability of drawing a card worth 10? Well, now there are a lot more options. I see a total of, let's see, 4, 8, 12, 16 cards with a value of 10 if you include these three face cards, the Jack, the Queen, and the King. So the probability of drawing a card worth 10 is a much higher 16 out of 52, or about 31%. In fact, if we look at the values of the cards again, it should be pretty clear that, in general, we are much more likely to pick a high card than a low one. In fact, there's nearly a 50-50 chance of pulling a card worth more than 7 from a full deck. This observation will be vital in developing a basic strategy in the game of Blackjack. Now, as a quick side note, I'm looking at one deck of cards here, and we're going to be doing our calculations based around having one deck of cards. However, most casinos don't just have one deck of cards per Blackjack table. Because they don't want to have to reshuffle every few games, they often have six, seven, eight, even nine decks all shuffled together, so you will end up with two Queen of Hearts at the same time, for example. It also makes it more difficult to sway the odds by counting cards. And yes, we are going to be talking about card counting in a future video. Don't you worry. Just stay tuned. But for now, we are coming to the end of the video, so please do hit that thumbs up button if you really liked it. If you think this is stuff that is worth teaching, if you think this is stuff that is worth learning, please share these videos around. I also have another channel called Professor Cunningham, where I give much more rigorous math lectures aimed at high school students and their parents and teachers. So if you are a student looking for support in math, you can find both of my channels at professor-cunningham.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.